So how do you start using Git like a professional software developer? If you're just learning how to code, you might come across the word Git. And if you don't know what Git is, it's just a developer tool that you use to keep track of different versions of your code. Git is particularly useful when you're building complex projects. When you're building these complex projects, you want to build them incrementally, and that way you build it in such a way that it's more stable and more robust. It is also useful when you're working in a team. In a team, you can have different team members build different parts of the code, and you can all do it at the same time. And Git allows you to do that because it allows you to build your code incrementally. When I graduated from college, I didn't have any experience in Git. It was only when I went to my first job that I first found out about Git, and I had a lot of nice coworkers and good supervisors who showed me the ropes in how to use Git. Because of that first job, I had a lot of good experience in Git, and when I went to my second job, I knew Git really well and I was able to integrate well with my new team. So in this video, I'll be going over how we've used Git at both of my jobs. Then I'll go over the five Git professional development phases and how you can start using Git like a professional even though you're not in a professional setting. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects, and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so this is Git's website, and I wanted to go here because I really like the diagram that they have on their website. All right, so how do we use Git at work? At work, whenever we have a project, we have a repository. We start with a repository, and a repository is just a storage of all of your files and your code. And we can say this is the starting point. We'll call this your repository. And each of these stacks of paper are different versions of that repository. And you can think of this red line as a branch, the main branch. And it goes from version zero all the way up to version, version N. So this is our master branch. And whenever we want to develop our code, we create a branch and then we do our code changes there. And then after we're done making those code changes, we bring it into the master branch. There are two general ways that you develop your code. The first one is you either fix your code or you do some sort of cleanup. And then the second one is you develop a new feature. So when I was at my company and they asked me to do some sort of fixing of a bug or some sort of cleanup, I would create a new branch from the master branch. So this is just a copy of this, the master branch's code. And then I would do all my development there. Or if they wanted me to develop a new feature, I would do the same thing. I would create a new branch and then I would name it accordingly relevant to what kind of branch this is. And then I would do all my development there. And then I would bring it in into the master branch eventually. All right, so here are the five Git professional development phases. The first one is you create a branch. So you create a branch. And then the second one is you develop your code. And I really like this diagram because see these plus signs? That usually just means you're adding lines of code. And then you have these minus signs. It means you're subtracting lines of code. So in this repository, there's like four files. And in the first file, you're adding like three lines of code. And then in the third file, you're adding two lines of code and subtracting or deleting two lines of code. And as you're developing your code, you're probably doing this in your IDE. And this is gonna be local to your computer, but you want other people to see it too. So what you need to do is the third phase, which is to commit your changes and push it to the remote server. And then after you do this, your coworkers can look at the remote server and they can see your branch there. And this leads into the code review phase. And in this phase, at both of my companies, we usually use a different application for this. When I've coded with other developers outside of my work, we would do the code review in the pull request phase. And in the pull request phase, basically you finish your code and then you want to bring this code into the main branch or the master branch. So you would do a pull request and you would say, I want to bring these changes into the master branch. 
When you do this pull request, the other developers can look at the code changes that you're proposing to bring in and then they can approve or they can make some suggestions and then you have to fix them. And this leads into the fifth phase, which is just to get approved. You want to make sure that your coworkers are happy or your collaborators are happy with the code changes that you're suggesting. And then after you fix your code the way that they want you to fix it, they can go ahead and approve your request. And usually we have a team lead or a software lead who will bring these changes and approve the pull request and actually bring it into the master branch. And usually we don't let all the developers bring in their code into the master branch themselves because if everyone can do that, it will become very messy in the master branch. So usually we let the team leader merge our code from our branches into the master branch. So this is a really good summary of how we use Git in a professional setting. All right, so now how can you start using Git like a professional developer? All right, first, you're going to want to make an account with GitHub. And GitHub is just a website that you can use to create your own Git repositories and have them hosted remotely. So after you've made an account with GitHub, you're going to go to your dashboard and then you're going to create a new repository. So in this example, I'm going to make a magic eight ball program. And then I'm going to make it public so that you can access it. I'm going to put a link in the description. And then we're going to go ahead and create the repository. All right, we've created the repository. So now we're going to want to get the link to the repository and use git clone to clone it to our local computer. Okay, git clone. And then do that. It says you appear to have cloned an empty repository. And that makes sense because we just created it. Now we're going to go into our repository. And then see there's nothing inside. All right, next we're gonna open our favorite IDE. In this example, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Now I'm gonna open that folder that I just created. All right, so here's that folder I created by doing the git clone. This is a clone of my repository that is in the remote server. So let's open that. Okay, there's nothing here. So let's create a new file, magic8ball.c. All right, I got this code from ChatGPT, but it's really basic. Basically, we have a result variable, and then we will set it to one first. And this is the variable that is going to change based on the random roll of the dice. Then we're going to give a print statement saying, welcome to the random dice roll simulator. Then we're going to have another printf statement that says that you rolled a, a one, two, three, four, five, or six. But for now, we're just going to roll one every time. So let's run this. Okay, so now we're rolling a number one every time. Oh, we actually don't need the time library. That's actually for later. All right, now we're gonna add this file to our repository so that everyone can see it. So let's do an ls again. Okay, there it is, the magic eight ball.c. This is the executable. So we don't wanna add executables to our repository because everyone's gonna build it themselves. So they're gonna build their own executables and then run it themselves. The only thing that matters is the source code. So we're gonna add the source code and then we'll do a commit message and basically say add initial source code. And after we've committed it, we're gonna do a git push origin this branch is automatically named main. Usually it's master, but I think GitHub makes it default to main. So we're gonna push git push origin main. All right, so we created a new branch and it's gonna be called main. So this is our main branch. Now let's go back to our GitHub website. So let's refresh GitHub and there you go. So there's the first file and there's my commit message that I just added, add initial source code. So if we click on this, we can see our initial source code here. All right, say my boss wanted me to add a new feature so that this result isn't always one and it's actually a random number. All right, so let's create a new branch and this is the first phase. So let's clean this up. Okay, so let's do a git checkout dash B and I'm going to name it HM, which are my initials. Then I'm gonna name it random because I'm adding more randomness to the program. So let's create my branch. All right, so now I'm in branch HM random. If, if you wanna check the status of your, your repository right now, your local one, you can do git status and it'll tell you which branch you're on. So I'm in branch HM random. All right, so now we can start making our changes in our IDE. 
And that's the second phase to develop our code. All right, now we need the time library because we're going to be using time as a to seed our random number generator. All right, now we seed the random number generator with srand and then we use the time. And then we're gonna use the rand function and do modulo six. So we get numbers zero through five, but a six sided die doesn't have zero through five. It has one through six. So we have to add one so that it's not zero through five, it's one through six. And now that, that number is gonna be stored in the result. And then that result will be shown in this printf statement. All right, so let's run that. All right, now we have a five and then we got a two and then four and then six. All right, so now I can commit this change. So we do git status. So git is able to tell that we've modified the magic eight ball.c file. So we need to add the C file. And then we're gonna commit and we're gonna put a message here. Okay, we're gonna say make result variable random. And then we're gonna do a git push origin. And we're not gonna do main this time, we're gonna do hm random because that's the branch that I'm, that I'm on right now. So I'm gonna push this branch up. And this is the third phase, which is to commit and push your code. So now everyone can see it. So let's go back to GitHub. Now it says here, HM random had recent pushes less than a minute ago. So now we have two branches, main and HM random. So say I'm done and then I want to create a pull request. So this is gonna be phase four, to do a code review or pull request. So let's do that. And then I'm opening a pull request. And then I, I'm going to say I made result be random. So I'm going to create a pull request. So here's the pull request. Now here you can actually see the changes that are made. So if you're my coworker, you can click here, files changed. And here you can see all the changes that I made. Okay, so Henrik added this header and then added these lines of code. Okay, so it looks good. So pretend I'm Henrik's coworker and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks good. If I don't like something, I can make some comment and, make, and submit my review there. And so if everything looks good and I've updated the code in the way that everyone wants and everyone's happy with it, we can go ahead and move on to the fifth phase, which is to get approved. So we can actually merge the pull request. So pretend I'm the supervisor and then I say, oh, okay, this looks good. Uh, so let's go ahead and merge it. And then you have to confirm the merge. And there you go. I've successfully merged the code from HM random to the main branch. And you can actually delete the HM random branch because the main branch already has the changes. But usually we don't delete the branch because we want to save the branch for reference later on. But if you have too many branches, you want to clean up your repository, then you should delete branches that you don't need anymore. All right, so now we go back to main, we go into the main branch, and then if you look at the magic 8ball.c, now it has my code in there. And you can say, oh, Henrik made an update, and it was he made it three minutes ago, and the log that he had for it was to make the result variable random. And then you can click on it, you can look, look at this change that I made, and you can see the change I made again if you want to. All right, there you go. So that's how I've used Git at my workplaces. And then I've explained to you the five Git professional development phases. And then I went over an example of how you can start using Git in a professional way. All right, so how about you? How are you gonna start using Git professionally in your code bases? I'd love to hear what kinds of programs you're building and what kind of steps you're gonna be taking to find other programmers so that you can start developing code together in Git. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and then go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and I really appreciate you. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.